welcome to this little coffee tasting tutorial that I'm going to give to you. My name is Tim Wendelbo and I run a coffee shop and a coffee roastery in Oslo, Norway, where we import uh, green coffee from uh, different countries around the world and we export roasted coffee and sell roasted coffee here in Norway. Cool, uh, we're here today because uh, I was asked to do a little tasting tutorial, uh, which means we have set up a little coffee cup tasting. And if you don't know what that is, I probably guess you already know, but if you don't know what that is, you can check out our little cupping tutorial on YouTube or on our website, timwendelbow.no, where it's basically how to set up a cup tasting. Um, today we're gonna focus on uh, one coffee actually, uh, and we're going to just try to taste the coffee and try to kind of describe it. But you notice we have four different cups, cups here. That's because I want to have a reference. And today I've actually chosen an instant coffee as a reference. And that's just because I want something contrasting to the other coffee that I'm tasting. So if you want to become good at tasting coffee, it's always good to have more than one coffee on the table. Uh, because then you have something to compare it with. So I recommend at least having two coffees that are very different if you're going to start tasting and describing coffee flavor. It's very difficult if you have 10 coffees coming from the same farm, for instance, although they might have subtle differences. It's going to be a very difficult exercise for a new coffee taster to kind of describe the differences in the coffee. So it's much easier if you buy a coffee, let's say an El Salvadoran Bourbon, and then you taste that next to a Kenyan washed coffee. They're gonna be very, very different in acidity, mouthfeel, flavor profile, and so on. Also, if you have an Indian coffee compared with an Ethiopian, you're gonna have the same kind of contrast. But if you have you know, two different Colombian coffees from the same state, a Wheeler or something, um, the differences might not be that big. So, you should kind of start with a bigger contrast and then you can narrow it down as uh, the better you get at tasting. Now today we've actually taken three cups of the same coffee and the reason why I've done that is because in the first cup here I've ground the coffee really really coarse, so coarse that it looks you know almost too coarse um, and I've done that because it does something to the concentration and the mouthfeel, acidity and aftertaste. In the middle here, we have a medium grind, which is probably what you would use when you brew a hand brew, maybe like a 200 gram hand brew, you would brew, grind this kind of grind setting. And at the end there, I have the finest grind setting on my grinder, which is a little bit finer than espresso. So that means really, really fine powder. Now brew this uh, the same way, like a cup tasting, 11 grams of coffee, I have 180 grams of boiling water. And after four minutes, I stir in each cup and then I remove the, the crust. And now I've let them cool down a little bit. And this is kind of individual how hot you prefer your coffee. But if they're really, really hot, it's going to be very difficult to taste. So I prefer them when they're quite cooled down to like 50, 60 degrees when I start tasting. And I, then I taste it all the way down to, to uh, room temperature, actually. And the same with the instant coffee, same temperature as this. So you have something to compare with. Now let's just start by tasting the instant coffee just for fun. Mm. Wow, and that tastes really kind of generic coffee flavor. It's quite roasty. It has this kind of roasted corn flavor, so I expect or suspect it to be with Robusta, but that really doesn't matter. What matters is that it has coffee flavor, and this is a flavor you kind of need to get used to in order to catch other flavors in the coffee. Uh, because coffee flavor is quite, you know, uh, it's overwhelming for some people. There's a lot of bitterness, there's a lot of this kind of chocolatey flavor, roasty flavor, and so on. So, um, but most of those coffee, most coffees have those flavors. So it's just a matter of trying to pick out the other flavors that kind of separates one coffee from another. Now we're gonna focus on mainly three, maybe four uh, flavor, uh, kind of categories here. One being acidity. We're gonna focus a little bit on mouthfeel. We're gonna focus on aftertastes. And of course we can focus a little bit on flavor description, like if it tastes like a berry or a chocolate. Uh, I tend to do when I train people not to focus too much on that because that's normally what people want to do. You know, they want to describe, oh, this smells like blueberry and this smells like chocolate. But that for me, it doesn't really describe the coffee very well. Uh, I need to know whether the mouthfeel is clean, is it rough, you know, all these kind of things. So let's go through them. 
and let's just taste all these three side by side. Now the first impression that I get, because these are ground very, very different. This is a very coarse grind, this is a medium grind, and this is a very fine grind. The first thing that I really notice is that there is a huge difference in mouthfeel in these coffees. And obviously that has something to do with extraction of the coffee. But let's say that these were three different coffees and they were ground with the same grind setting and the same uh, brew method. You can still get a very, very different mouthfeel from one coffee to another. So mouthfeel is something that uh, can really uh, make a coffee taste really great and balanced. It can also be very light, you know, uh, it can be very thick. So think of mouthfeel as uh, different uh, textures of the coffee. So with this very coarse setting, I notice that the mouthfeel is quite thin. It's quite watery actually. And it just feels, feels a little unbalanced. Of course, there's a nice acidity there. This is a geisha coffee. It doesn't have to be a geisha coffee. It can be any coffee. But it has a nice acidity and some nice fruit flavor. But I still feel like the mouthfeel is a little watery. And the aftertaste is really short. It just, you know, as soon as I've spit, spit out the coffee or swallowed it, the aftertaste just stops. And it's not a bad aftertaste, like, but it, it's just stopping. And there's just a little bit of kind of coffee flavor in, inside my mouth. So. For me, this is a very thin textured coffee. Now the middle one, I notice that the mouthfeel is a little bit smoother. It's uh, quite well balanced, I would say. Also the aftertaste is a little bit longer. I can feel that the kind of coffee is a little bit more stuck in the mouth after I've swallowed or spit it out. Still some nice acidity and maybe a little bit more fruit flavor in this one. Let's taste the third one. Mm. This has a really creamy mouthfeel, like it's really present mouthfeeling. And a lot of people will say this is much sweeter. And it might be. Uh, sweetness and mouthfeel for me is quite difficult to distinguish. Normally what I kind of catch up on a coffee that's very sweet is that when I have it in my mouth, the mouthfeel tends to kind of just grow and grow on me and kind of becomes this kind of really nice sweetness. So. If you're wondering how to kind of <laughs> distinguish sweetness, um, put some sugar in the coffee and see what happens. Mm. So here, acidity feels a little bit lower. There's still a lot of fruit, but you also get some other kind of more bitter compounds and the mouthfeel is really thick. So the first thing I like to do when I taste coffee, because when I taste coffee, normally I do it to buy coffees. And what I look for then is if the coffee has been well processed. And that goes for any process actually. So I'm looking for a very smooth and clean mouthfeel. I'm looking for sweetness. It doesn't have to be a very thick mouthfeel. It can also be <clears throat> slightly thinner and more refreshing coffee. For instance, if it's a washed Ethiopian coffee, they tend to have a little bit lighter mouthfeel and geisha coffees too. Whereas if it was a Bourbon from El Salvador, I would expect it to have a little bit bigger mouthfeel, but still it needs to be a very smooth, slick, elegant, you know, uh, nice velvety texture. That's a sign of very high quality coffee. Now, mouth now mouthfeel can also be quite rough. It can be perceived as slight, a slight salty if the coffee is a little unripe. And if it's, if, they, if it's a very nutty coffee, you can also get this kind of almost gritty mouthfeel. But although this cup was ground really, really fine, it still has a very smooth texture. That's interesting. So that's kind of number one what I'm looking for when I buy coffees. Now let's talk about acidity because acidity is kind of the backbone in the coffee. It creates structure in the coffee and it feels great if it's there and if it's a good quality acidity, but it can also make coffee taste really sour. And sour, nobody likes. For me, high quality acidity feels like ripe, delicious, uh, and sour acidity feels, you know, like when you're biting off a lemon, that's very sour. A good kind of explanation of good quality and bad quality acidity is if you press a lot of lemon into water and you drink it, you'll probably feel that it's very sour. If you put sugar in, 
or honey and kind of balance out that acidity, all of a sudden you can drink it as a refreshing lemonade. And that's when you kind of like the acidity. So that's kind of how you can describe acidity, if it's a good quality or not. Uh, but it can also be like, does it remind you of eating lemons or a really sweet orange? Or is it more like when you eat stone fruit or tart uh, grapes? Can it be more like an apple taste, you know? So tartness, for instance, if you have a very tart coffee, you'll feel like something is really making structure in your mouth. Uh, and if you have this kind of overripe fruit flavors, which you tend to have in some natural coffees, the acidity can feel kind of flabby and you know, not so structured and a little vulgar actually. So there's different types of describing acidity in terms of quality and also what type of acidity people are very hung up. I'm not so hung up on it. I'm just kind of, for my own sake, just trying to describe the coffee so that I remember them myself. So for instance, with this coffee, I would say, for me to remember this coffee, it's very smooth and the acidity reminds me a mix between like eating a very ripe mandarin, uh, so that means citric and also a uh, very nice stone fruit like peach, like really ripe peach. So that's how you can describe acidity. Now you can also taste, is it a very high acidity or does it have almost no acidity? So for instance, this instant coffee, There's almost no acidity there. There's nothing kind of on the side of the, my mouth that says, you know, ooh, this is nice and refreshing. And this is more like eating a very, very dark chocolate or burnt toast or burnt pizza crust. Whereas here, mm, all of a sudden coming from the instant coffee, you feel on this coffee that it's kind of tickling on the side of the tongue, quite refreshing. And it's more like eating ripe fruits. And that's a good sign of good acidity. So acidity can be low, can also be a good quality when it's low, can be high, can also be a good quality when it's high, but it can also be negative on both sides. So that's kind of how we describe acidity in coffee. And then aftertaste for me is really, really important. And it's a good sign of quality because if it, the aftertaste is really short, of course, it can be a sign of you under extracting the coffee. If you don't extract a lot of the coffee like we've done here when it's very coarsely ground, it kind of uh, makes the mouth feel very thin, but it also makes the aftertaste very short. And that also makes the acidity a little bit kind of more aggressive and not so nice. So when all these kind of things are together, you tend to have a better, high, better quality acidity more lingering, sweet aftertaste and a better mouthfeel, you know? So if a coffee, let's say they were ground on the same way and one coffee had a really sour flavor, thin mouthfeel, short aftertaste, can be a sign of under extraction, can be a sign of under roasting, or it can be a sign of the coffee not being very high quality. So that's kind of how you distinguish aftertaste, I think. Uh, for me, at least, the most important good quality coffee normally has a very lingering aftertaste. And it can be a kind of lingering in a more kind of textural way where it's kind of, you feel like you still have coffee in the mouth all the time, or it can be like a lingering, like you think about it afterwards and you have a very positive experience about the coffee. Here I'm actually getting a little bit of negative experience because it's becoming more like uh, a very generic coffee flavor. Let's taste the middle one. Mm. Very ripe uh, flavors of fruits, uh, mandarin, peach, floral. Mouthfeel is really nice and balanced. Aftertaste is lingering, but not, you know, overpowering. It's not very bitter. It's not thin. It's there as a textural thing, like uh, you've eaten a caramel and you still have this kind of sugary thing in your mouth. Mm, really nice. Nice, sweet, lingering, caramelly aftertaste. Very well balanced coffee, I, th I would say. It's the same coffee, it's just ground a little bit finer than this one. Now the last one. 
Mm, very thick mouthfeel. The acidity here feels much lower. That's maybe because it's so extracted that the, you kind of get a lot more bitterness as well. The aftertaste is really lingering. It's like I've eaten a dark chocolate and you have this kind of bitter dark chocolate flavor in the aftertaste. Very lingering, but maybe not as positive as the middle one here. But that's of course because it's ground to very fine powder and maybe, you know, I could have roasted this coffee slightly lighter if I wanted to extract it this high, you know. Um, but if this was uh, three different coffees, uh, I would definitely go for the middle one if I was to buy the coffees, because that's what kind of gives me the best quality aspects. You know, very nice balanced acidity, uh, nice textural smooth mouthfeel, slightly more lingering aftertaste than the first one, but less bitter than the last one. Yeah, it just feels very ba well balanced. Now you might say, maybe I'm buying the wrong type of coffees when I'm how do I grind the coffee when I buy the coffees? Well, <laughs> we don't necessarily grind the coffee exactly the same way every single time. But what I do when I buy coffee is actually we, I normally cut them uh, when I'm visiting the farmer. So I get samples there, we roast them, we taste them together. I pick out what I believe are the best ones. And that's based on a, a session like this. Like I'm looking for the mouthfeel, the aftertaste, the flavors, of course, the acidity. And of course, I might have missed a couple of coffees, but normally there's more than enough coffees to choose from. Then I normally take the samples home and I re-roast them and I cup them several times. But then I have like a fixed grind setting here for all the coffees that I know I'm getting a very high extraction so I can see that there's any faults in the coffee. So I'm more looking for, you know, if there's any defects in the coffee, if the coffee is inconsistent between cups and so on. And of course, it has to have these qualities like a very nice mouthfeel nice uh, aftertaste, nice acidity. And I can buy coffees that are very different. Some can be very low acidity, but that can be a nice thing as well. For instance, uh, the El Salvadoran coffees we buy from Los Pirineos, quite low acidity. They're more like chocolatey coffees, very sweet, but they're very sweet and they're very smooth and very nice texture. Whereas our Kenyans are more intense, they're more tart, they're more fruity. They also have very good textured mouthfeel, but the much higher acidity and more intensity of fruit flavor. That's kind of how I uh, describe different coffees. So if you want to describe the flavors, which is the kind of most fun part, I guess, when you taste coffees, it's always good to have a reference like this. It can be a very dark roast or a instant coffee or a very low quality uh, supermarket coffee. That makes a really nice contrast to a lighter, uh, high quality coffee like this. Mm. This tastes like roasted corn, actually. Very bitter, very rough. Has a very caramelly aftertaste, but I do find that in a lot of the instant coffees, they get this kind of generic coffee candy flavor. But it's not very nice, but that's not the point. The point is to kind of fill your mouth with coffee flavor. And then when you taste coffee flavor here, you will start to taste the fruit flavor. So let's go to the middle one. Mmm. Coming from here, this is like biting into a ripe mandarin. It's so distinct. Mm. And I guess if this was our Kenyan coffee, it would be really fruity, like rose hips, uh, black currants, blackberries, that kind of fruits, red fruits. Mm. And it's so easy to kind of taste the sweetness and texture in this after you come from a more rough uh, roasted coffee. It feels like it's very gritty on the tongue, like you have kind of um, particles in the coffee. But it, there's, there's no particles there. This feels almost savory now. It's very, very dense and ripe fruit flavor. So that's kind of how you describe the coffees. And of course, that's a little cultural, cultural uh, depending. So for instance, uh, I've been tasting a lot of coffees in Honduras with coppers there. And when I taste coffees that has a very distinct strawberry flavor, they always say that it tastes like mango. But when you taste mango and strawberry side by side there, it's quite similar actually. It's at least the strawberries we have here in Norway can have this kind of mango type of flavor. So 
How you describe the coffee can be a little personal, depending on what kind of references you have. So there's no right or wrong there, but we do know that it's kind of like uh, molecules that are little pieces of puzzles. So when they are put together, they can form different types of pictures. So that means molecules in this coffee can be, or aroma molecules can be the same type of aroma molecules that you find in a mandarin, for instance, and maybe that's why our brain tells us, hmm, this tastes a little bit like mandarin because I know, know that molecule from before. That's kind of how we perceive flavor. So flavor is more like the aromatics actually, but since you were tasting it, you get, get it through the back of your throat up to your nose and also, of course, when you smell the coffee. It's very nice to have I love to do like a Brazilian coffee, maybe a Kenyan coffee, maybe an Ethiopian coffee, and maybe an Indian coffee on one table. Very contrasting coffees and they will give you very nice flavor experiences. And if you're lucky like me to have a geisha, you can put that on the table and it will get those kind of typical geisha flavors like jasmine, mandarin, honey and so on. Cool, I hope you enjoyed this little tasting tutorial. Of course, we could talk taste all day and there's much more science behind this, uh, but I wanted to give you a little easy to follow tasting tutorial and an exercise that you can do at home. You know, you can do this with two or three different coffees if you like, just set up more cups and do the coarse, medium and fine grind setting. That makes it a lot easier to describe the coffees um, and focus on one thing at a time and try to taste them when they're hot and when they cool down as well. It will give you normally, especially with lighter roast, they tend to taste sweeter and more pronounced as they cool. Uh, and they tend to not taste as nice when they're really, really hot. And um, with very dark roast, it's normally the opposite. And that's probably because the body perceives flavor better when the liquid becomes more towards body temperature. So that means higher quality coffees normally taste better at lower uh, temperatures whereas low quality coffees will taste worse and worse when they cool down. Cool, I hope you enjoy the taste tutorial and uh, good luck with it.